If you're looking for a place to stay nice and cool with your family, Science Central offers a place for family fun and learning. Joining us today is Science Central's Executive Director, Martin Fisher. Martin, thanks again for joining us Good today. morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, so there, I wanted to bring in some space-related stuff, astronomy stuff, because there are some very cool things going on. If you look up in the sky, either late at night or early in the morning, if you were lucky enough to look up last night, you probably saw the moon. Absolutely spectacular. And if you watched it for a while, when it was low on the horizon, it was kind of a pinkish color as it moved higher and higher up as different wavelengths of light reflected, then it looked the traditional, more whitish color. But I wanted to talk about meteorites. Three terms to think about. Meteoroids, that's the stuff that's out there in space. Meteor, if it hits the Earth's atmosphere and friction makes it ignite, burn up as it goes across the sky. And a meteorite, if it's lucky enough to make it through the atmosphere, survive and get to the ground. About a week, roughly a week, week and a half ago, we were going through the Perseid meteor showers. And you can still see some remnants. Adam, yeah, I you said you just saw one. Just saw one the, the other, other night, night on Thursday or so. Yeah, fantastic. So you can still see them, but you're going to want to go out early in the morning. Wake up sometime between midnight, I would say, and early hours, probably when you were driving to work, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, there we go. So for this particular meteor shower known as the Perseids, it is the most spectacular meteor shower of the year. I have my model of the Earth over here. As the Earth goes around the sun, it passes through areas in space that are filled with stuff, debris, rock, ice, pieces of metal. For this particular meteor shower, the Perseids, it's going through an area of space that has debris from a comet called Swift Tuttle, named after the people who found it. Now, it turns out that there are three different types of meteorites. Remember, that's the term that makes it to ground. You have iron meteorites made of iron. You have stony meteorites. And I don't know if the camera can zoom in on that or not. It looks just like a plain rock. Yeah except it happens to be extraterrestrial in origin. And then you have what's known as a mix, stony irons. Very creative naming, right? Exactly. Right? I have a stony iron over here. And again, I don't know if the camera can zoom in, but this particular piece has been cut open. And you can see little flecks of metal mixed in with the rock. Now, again, I realize it's probably hard to see if you're watching at home. I do have a larger cross section of an iron meteorite. Adam, if you can hold that for me for a second while I get my magnet over here. What I'm gonna do is, I'll try not to trip over all the gear that's here. I have a little magnet. Because it's made of iron, sure enough, it sticks to the iron meteorite. And Adam, if you take a look at the pattern on that, one yeah. of the characteristics of the iron meteorites is when they're cut, polished, etched with an acid, they have this really unique crosshatch pattern. Very cool. Kind of like your tie. Actually, yes. it, it looks exactly very close like to his my tie. tie. So if you can't see the meteorite, but you can see Adam's tie, that's what it looks like. Here's a fancy word for you. Look it up. Widmanstatten pattern. I know, tough one. German name, Widmanstatten pattern. And that's that characteristic crosshatch. Go out maybe tonight. You might get lucky and be able to see a remnant of one of those meteors streaking across, hitting the Earth's atmosphere, and we see that streak of light. Well, thank you so much for joining us here, Martin. Science Central is open from noon until 5 today. Find out more information on sciencecentral.com.